I don't know if you ever heard this question, but like I always ask people, and this is no shade to um you know Baptist people, but it's just a question, like, why do you call yourself a Baptist? Because when they ask us, why do you call yourself a Pentecostal? Why do you call yourself apostolic? Some of us may not know the answer, but I'm just curious to know, is there an answer when it comes to why are you a Baptist? You know, I, you know everything else, you can study out your faith and say that mm -hmm. this is true. You know, um, the non-denominational approach, you know, it's like, I guess logically, it, it makes a little more sense. But the the Baptist thing, just right from the start, why am I a Baptist? You know what I mean? Like right from the gate, because maybe we should be calling ourselves Baptists because we actually believe that baptism is for salvation. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's just, you know, some of the things I think about when I'm talking to these to these people. You know, it's it's just... It's funny to me. People don't think like that. You know, titles are deceiving. That's that's the thing. Hey, brother. You, you so like, even something I'm just growing in, like, you know, it's good that we have all these, like, denominational descriptions and all that. Like, it's good. You really do see, you know, what they believe, you know, if they're on an, under some umbrella, you get to see all that. But yeah. we know that's not the Lord's will. And so... You can claim your title like, oh, I'm apostolic, oh, I'm Baptist, I'm this, this, oh, and yeah, yeah. that. I'm with you, bro. It really don't matter, man. You're coming back for a bride, you're coming back for the body of Christ. There's no, there's no title on that. There's yeah. blood on it, though. Do you have the blood on you? That's the more important part. That's, Hold on, brother. That's the more part. Yeah. You, you need to stop. You I had to throw stop. that in there. What are you talking about? You, stop. you said the blood. I'm about to play the blood still work. <laughs> Well, let me not. I'm sorry. I don't want to stop. <laughs> What's the scripture? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One that's, Lord, that's all one it is. faith, one baptism. That's all it is. I'm telling you, man. See, I tell you, the only reason I even speak about, uh, you know, Pentecostal, apostolic, whatever, just so, you know, for conversation purposes. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to it, I'm a truth seeker, man. I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Christ. You know, but obviously the background, Pentecostal, apostolic, that's what I grew up in. So if I speak that to somebody, if we're having a conversation, that just, you know, allows us to understand each other. But right. um, when it comes down to it, obviously, I'm not going to ever confine myself to any box of beliefs. I would never do that. And I think that's really the, the whole point is when you put yourself <clears throat> in that Pentecostal or apostolic box or Baptist box or Jehovah's Witness box, you know, whatever box you put yourself in, you're limiting yourself to all the other truth that is outside of that box. Like what if your church isn't even following, you know, what the apostolics, what the apostolic, what the apostles did? Mm hmm. You know, so I just say, obviously, you know, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you know, like, why people call themselves Pentecostal. If you ever, like, thought about that. Yeah, yeah so. Because they associate with the experience of Pentecost. Same thing. That's, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. And that's when the, the 3,000 souls were added to the church. But obviously, it's not about, like you said, it's not about the title. You know, like, it's about, it's like, it's not necessarily the, like, when you say you get baptized in the name of Jesus, you're getting baptized in the blood. That's why when you speak Spanish, you might get baptized in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's technically different words, but it's the same meaning. You see, mm -hmm. and that's how I look at those, uh, <clears throat> the the meanings of what you associate yourself with. So I'm thinking we're on the same page, you know, from what you're saying, it sounds like we're on the same page. Yeah, it's just, it's just <laughs> important. Like you say, we don't confine ourselves. There's truth even outside your church, because I don't think any church is perfect. I think that is that's just how it is. We're literally flesh. 
We right. have people like we're flesh trying to serve the Lord. That's what it is. The fact that the Lord even takes pleasure in flesh serving him. You know, that's why it says we got to be led by the spirit and that the spirit leads us into truth because our flesh will not lead us in the truth. It'll lead us into something else. Another way. He said not yeah. to go to the right or the left. That's where our flesh wants to go. It doesn't want to stay in the straight and narrow. It wants to deviate a little bit. You know, even if you go one degree, eventually you'll be away from the path. That's, that's how it goes. Someone said, go straight north. Go face that north star. Go zero degrees north. I want you to go north. But you're at one degree. You're not going to get to the destination. That's not how it mm -hmm. goes. It's the same one degree. The Lord. Straight and narrow path. That's how it is. Why is that path to destruction? That's why you got to seek the Lord. That's why you need the spirit. If you don't have a spirit, you ain't going to get there. You're not. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you're not his. As simple as that. If you're not born in the water of the spirit, you ain't going to enter into the kingdom. That's what it says. Mm. So like once we grasp that, then it's just like, okay, Lord, now where are you leading us? So we don't have this, these like basic things of the faith. It talks about that in Hebrew. Like let's move away from these basic things. There's, there's some other stuff we got to talk about. But we ain't there yet. I think as believers, that's something that we struggle with, man. Yeah, so I say drink, believers on as a milk. whole, too. We're on that milk. Yeah, you're right. We're on that milk. We're on that milk, man. Yeah. Got to get the meat. We're on that formula life. That, form <laughs> we're on that formula life, man. Come on, man. Hey, man, some of us are some big babies. You got, you got some colic babies still on milk. 15 years in the church still on milk. Big old some babies. Some ain't, ain't even drinking the milk. They just do at least get the mail. Come on now. Come <laughs> like on, you say you, you can't you can't be surviving off of yesterday's man. That's not how it works. That's you're spiritually fasting. That's what you're doing. You you fasting yeah, in your spirit, that. man. You can't do that. You brought up just some like if you don't use your muscles. If you don't use your muscles, they atrophy. It's the same thing with your spirit, man. If you ain't you ain't consuming, you ain't got your protein powder. Come on, you ain't if you're not gonna eat meat, at least at least drink some protein powder. Come on, you need a little yeah, something. Yeah. I know yeah, you got man. your scripture of the day. I know you got your verse of the day. You need a little bit more than that. I ain't, I'm not judging you for having your one scripture, but like you got to be meditating on that thing. It says meditate <laughs> on his words. So if you read that one scripture, oh, God is love. You better understand, oh, God is love. God's love the world. He gave his only balance. Oh, you got to go more in that scripture. If you hold on to that one verse of the day, you got to be eating mm. something. You can't just be starving yourself. You can't. You're going to die. You're going to die, man. That's what I'm saying. That's making me hungry right now, bro. Eat up, man. Eat up.